we dig into all the things. Let's settle in. We always at Breathe for Change settle in, just take a few moments to ground and center ourselves. And so find yourself in a comfortable seated position. And maybe do some shoulder rolls to get any kinks out. Yeah. And then clasp your hands above head for a full body stretch, doing some mindful movement ourselves. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And then move on over to the right or the left side. Inhale, exhale. And then come back through center and find your way to the opposite side. Inhale and release. And then whenever you're ready, just allow your hands to find your heart. So bring one palm over your heart and the other over that hand. And if you'd like, you can soften your gaze or close your eyes and connect to your breath. Observing the rise and the fall of each inhale and each exhale. And as you continue to breathe, I invite you to check in with yourself after this long Tuesday and just see how am I feeling right now? Just notice, check in with yourself. How are you feeling? What emotions are showing up for you? At Breathe for Change in our 200 hour training, one of our favorite SEL practices is called the two word check-in. So I invite you each to find two words that describe how you're feeling. And then when you have those two words, if you'd like, you can enter them into the chat. Also name where, what state you're coming from or even the city. We have people from all over, it's already coming through. So put your two words in there, anxious, decompressing, disconnected, excited, calm, sleepy, tired, grateful, hopeful, excited, anxious, tired, grateful, cuddly, excited. We got everything in this space. And just no matter where you are, know that it's absolutely okay. So just accepting wherever you are, that's part of this practice, right? Oh my gosh, we have people from all over the country. I love it. It's amazing. San Francisco, Mississippi, Arizona, Kentucky, Virginia. We got it all. Ohio, Massachusetts. Welcome, everybody. So excited um, for the, our time together. And for those of you who are new, at the end, I'll take a few minutes afterwards um, to share a little more about our 200 hour training. So if you wanna stay and learn a little bit more, I'm happy to share, but all of you will get a taste of, of what we do at Breathe for Change through this training. Um, so teaching trauma-informed mindful movement to K through 12 students. So we will dive into how do you do that today? And what are some practices that you can integrate into your teaching every single day to support not only your students, but also your well-being. All right, so I've got three outcomes that are my intentions for you. Um, first and foremost, I my intention is that you enhance your own well-being through embodying mindful movement practices. So we're going to be now, I'm not just going to be telling you what to do with your students. I'm going to be inviting you to try it on in your own body so that you ultimately have the tools inside you to feel confident in teaching. Next, my intention is that you are able to integrate these inclusive mindful movement techniques into your classroom and community. I know some of you are in the digital space, others are hybrid, others are in-person, social distancing. We've got everything going on in this space, I know it. So we'll talk about how to modify and differentiate across different spaces and, and contexts. And then last but not least, community is at the heart of uh, what Breathe for Change is all about. So my intention is that 
all of you feel connected to other amazing, passionate educators and leaders who are deeply committed to healing, to using wellness as a vehicle for healing and social change. So that is what we are going to be doing in the next hour or so together. All right. So just to set some context before we dive into the practices themselves, um, in our 200 hour wellness SEL and yoga teacher training, we have what we call our SELF curriculum. So it's our social emotional learning curriculum. And at Breathe for Change, we tag on the F to SEL because we believe it's so critically important for us as educators and leaders and parents to embody the practices that we hope to bring to our students. So. There's eight components in our training, settle in, breath awareness, mindful movement, community connection, focus, creative expression, relaxation, and closing. And in our training, we do a deep dive into all of those. For the sake of today's purposes, we are going to dive into mindful movement and really taking this trauma-informed approach as we do this work. Everything that we do at Breathe for Change is through a trauma-informed lens. And I think it's more relevant now than ever before, given the unprecedented, unprecedented time that we're living in. So we are going to dive deep into component number three. So let's talk for a moment about the benefits of mindful movement. So mindful movement truly helps us and our students strengthen our bodies. So like physically, you know, build those muscles, strengthen our bodies. It also helps stimulate the mind. So what that means is like, if you're kind of tired or disengaged or disconnected, this will activate you or activate your students. And it's so beneficial, especially when we are teaching and learning in the context of the digital world or in, in person in ways we've never done before. And then it increases our in energy level. So if you notice, oh, the energy is low here. Now let's draw on some mindful movement. And by all means, I promise you that energy level is going to change. And research has shown, including my own dissertation research, that when we actually um, facilitate mindful movement with our students, it not only increases their social emotional skills, it also enhances their academic performance. So that connection between social emotional learning, academic performance is so real. And hopefully you experience some of that today. So although we often associate the dangers of a sedentary life with adulthood and working at a desk job, um, children are also seriously at risk, um, especially within our current education system and technologically driven world. So studies have actually shown that children across the globe sit for an average of 8.5 hours every day. And that that activity level drops after age eight and continues to decrease into adolescence and then adulthood. And this study was taken or was, was completed before COVID. So if you think about how much more people are sitting now, it gets a little scary. And that's really why we are so committed to bringing this movement in. And it really does make a difference. So know that even a minute of mindful movement um, that really supports your students can, can make the world of a difference. So uh, here's some examples of what it might look like in the digital world. In to the left, uh, I'm doing some tree poses with students that are middle schoolers. To the right, that's what it might look like once again once COVID is done and we can actually touch each other um, or connect with one another more personally. Um, but we'll talk about how to adapt for all of these different contexts and how do we make sure that it feels inclusive for for everyone involved. All right, so mindful movement exercises can be utilized as brain breaks. So, you know, after your brain's been working for a long time, let's just take a three minute brain break. So like that it can also be just an energizing activity. So you might want to uh, use it when you feel like the, the energy is low and be like, you know what, time for mindful movement. It's also great for transitions during learning. 
And so, you know, let's say your students are, have different periods. They're moving from one period to the next. Great way to start a new class. It's also great. They just took a test. Now we're transitioning to another activity. Let's do some mindful movement to, to energize ourselves and to release anything that we're holding on to. And in our 200 hour training, you actually learn how to incorporate mindful movement into an entire wellness class or a wellness workshop for your students. Um, which is a beautiful way to um, get them more deeply engaged in this work. So I wanna go over the four steps of actually teaching mindful movement so that as I get into the practices, you're like, oh, that's what she's doing. That's what she's doing. So step one is super important to remember to warm your students up before you encourage them to dive into deeper poses. So this may mean, you know, take a few deep breaths or like what I did with you, roll your shoulders back, lengthen your spine. We're just kind of getting them warmed up a little bit moving. And then we want to link the breath to the movement. So a simple cat cow like this, where we're breathing in, opening our chest, exhaling, um, you know, arching our back, that might be a perfect way to link the breath to the movement. We'll do that practice so you can see it. Um, you can also do this practice that she's doing right here seated. Uh, we all, you, after you link the breath to movement, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can do that. Then if you'd like, you can add in some more poses, some mindful movement postures. Um, this can be anything like downward facing dog or warrior two, or a lot of the poses that I'm going to show you today um, are going to be on our chairs because that's the most accessible in today's current context, right? Not everyone has the space to get on the floor or onto a yoga mat. And so how can we incorporate all of these practices or steps in any context? And we'll talk about that. And then last but not least, one of the most important tools that we have is the questions we ask as educators. So we want not only our students to feel amazing when they're in the practices themselves, but we want them to reflect on how do I feel after doing this mindful movement? What's showing up in my body? The reason we do that is because it builds the first SEL competency skill of self-awareness. So our students are like, oh my gosh, I feel more energized. I feel calmer. I feel this, I feel that. Likely something positive that they would wanna draw on in a future situation. And then you can work with them to say, hey, when might be a great time for you to uh, feel or to, to draw on this practice in the future? And then they will definitely be able to, to also increase their self-management skills because when things get hard, they're like, ah, oh, I want to feel the way I felt when I did that practice. So I'm going to do some mindful movement now. So asking the question, how are you feeling? Letting them really reflect on that is so helpful for them later. And so these um, social emotional learning or mindful movement practices um, can be used both proactively and responsively. So what I mean by that is that we can draw on the practices in a responsive way. Like, the, like, let's just say you're super stressed or your students are super stressed or they're about to do a test or something really up, upsetting just happened in the context of your community or your classroom. Um, that might be a great time to invite in some mindful movement. Let's release that through our body, right? So that would be a responsive way to incorporate mindful movement. So something happens, a situation changes, a context um, is stressful, then you might be super responsive by saying, let's, you know, create some space to move our bodies right now. So that's one way. The other way is to take the proactive approach. And we welcome both um, simultaneously. The proactive approach would be like, all right, we are gonna have a daily mindful movement practice so that we can strengthen our bodies and uh, you know, clear our minds and energize ourselves for class today. So um, the proactive approach would be one where it's consistent, it's a routine, it's a practice that 
you are consistently engaging in with your students. And what that will do is decrease overall reactivity. All right, so enough talking for me. I wanna get into the practices with you. So here's a couple practices that we'll go through right now for how we can move our bodies or help our students move their bodies. And we'll do so in a trauma-informed way. So we'll start with some seated side bends, then we'll move to seated twists, then we'll move to seated cat-cow. We'll do some rich or wrist stretches. Um, we'll sh I'll show you tabletop and cat-cow. And then we'll do some half sun salutations and end with peaceful warrior. So give me a thumbs up if you're ready to try these things out. Awesome. All right. So I invite you to find a comfortable seat on your chair, on the couch, or wherever you are. Awesome. And so we're going to start with some seated side bends. So let's begin by just taking a deep breath in, deep breath out. And now I invite you to bring one hand, you can start with your right hand, to either your chair or the floor or something physical next to you so you can hold on to it. And then bring your left hand up and over and feeling that stretch along your entire left side body. So take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Again, inhale, exhale, breathe in, out with an audible sigh, and then gently Come back through center, put your left hand down and let your right hand come on back up, reaching over. And you can open your heart here. Take the deep breath in, deep breath out. Feeling that stretch along your entire right side, inhale. Exhale, beautiful, breathe in, out with a huge sigh, and then come back through center, bring your hands over your heart. You can soften your gaze or close your eyes and just connect here to how you are feeling after those seated side twists. And then I would absolutely love for you to take yourself off mute and just say in one word, how do you feel after that? Great. Wonderful. Relief. Relax. 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 Loved. Relax. 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 Superwoman. Relax. 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 Love it, everybody. So you can even feel that connection, right? When you ask, how do you feel? You're like, oh my God, that energy is just coming in through the community. And it reinforces the power of these practices. You don't need to do the convincing. They feel it. So let them share it to you. Just open the space for that. So that's how I would teach it to probably middle schoolers, high schoolers. But if you're like in my pre-K class or you're in my elementary school class, you better bet that I'm gonna like add in some rainbows or some bananas to that. So let's try, let's, so bring on your uh, early childhood elementary hat. You can decide how old you wanna be. Just embody that age that you wanna be. All right, so everyone find a comfortable seated position and we are going to do some seated side rainbows. And what that means is I want you to bring Show me one hand. Let's see it. There's one hand. Now put that hand down next to your side. And on the inhale, reach your rainbow up to the sky, creating a beautiful rainbow. Take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And then come back through center, bring your rainbow down and switch rainbow sides. So bring the other hand down and let's create another beautiful 
rainbow. And I want you to imagine all the colors of the rainbow as you're breathing. Take a breath in and out. And then come back through center. Bring your hands over your heart. And just take a moment to appreciate your rainbows. And notice how you feel after creating those rainbows with your body. And then if you'd like, you can come off mute and share in one word. How do you feel? Excited. Happy. Beautiful. That felt I fun. love being a rainbow. I <laughs> super woman. I feel Happy. good. Happy. Love it. So I, you know, I, your class might love rainbows. They might love being a banana. They might not vibe with that at all and just want you to tell them their right hand or their left hand. And so there's so many different ways that you can modify and differentiate these types of very simple practices. But essentially all I just did is one hand down, one hand up and over, and you just take some breaths there. They can, you can take one breath, you can take multiple breaths and then gently switch sides. And there you have it. So give me a yes in the chat if you're gonna try that one out with your students or if you're excited, I love it. All right, so you ready for the next one? Let's do some seated twists. So again, you can be seated on the ground, you can be seated on a chair or the couch. So I invite you to lengthen through your spine and bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Palms, kiss. Exhale, hands to your heart. We'll do a few rounds of those first. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Last time, inhale, reach up. Now this time, I want you to twist on over to the right side. So bring your left palm to your right knee or your thigh. Right fingertips reach back behind you, pressing into the ground or the chair, or whatever you're sitting, sitting on. And then twist from your low back to the crown of your head. So take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And you can imagine as though you're wringing yourself out like a sponge here, twisting out anything that's not serving you. Beautiful. On the next breath in, reach your hands back up to center. Exhale, cross on over to the opposite side. So right hand comes to the left leg, left fingertips reach back behind you, pressing into the earth or to your chair or to whatever surf surface you're on and lengthen through the top of your head, twisting. If you're stressed, letting go of any tension, wringing yourself out, take one more breath here. <clears throat> and then gently come back through center. Bring your hands over your heart. Take this moment to check in with yourself and just notice how you're feeling now. If you'd like, you can come off mute, share how you're feeling. You can put it into the chat, but let's hear it. Revived. <laughs> Love it. Peaceful, untangled, centered, refreshed. I love untangled, revived, beautiful, awesome. So that one is different than the first one in that we're not, we were, the first one we were kind of twisting up and down. This one we're twisting to the side. So we're doing this. So everyone take your bodies and do this thing. Awesome. This could be a great warm up for that yes. practice that we just did. And then you're just landing your, your hands down, right? So when you're thinking about teaching this practice, you just, I love bringing the, inhaling, reaching the hands up, and then on the exhale, twisting. And if you never, if you don't know the difference between the inhales and the exhales, try it in your body. And just to give you a little tip, Every time we're inhaling, we're opening. Inhale. So like 
Inhale, I'm opening my chest. Exhale, I'm, I'm closing somehow. I'm either twisting or I'm closing in forward folding, right? So if you want to try it the opposite way with me just for a sec so you know what it feels like to do it the opposite, you'll realize that you can be your own teacher and understand when the breath should be. So let's try exhaling as we reach our arms up and inhaling as we twist, and then you'll never want to do it again. Okay, ready? Take a deep breath in, and on the exhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Inhale, twist to the right. How'd that feel? <laughs> Let me know. Negative. Not That's good, not right? Comfortable. So not if you're good. ever like, oh, I, 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 I hear this all the time from teachers. I, I can't do it. I, I don't. I can never remember the breath. How am I supposed to teach this? I'm like, try it both ways and have your students try it both ways. Let it be an experiment, and everyone will come to their own conclusion based on how you feel. The body speaks, and the body knows. All right. So. And you can get really creative with like, how do you twist? Like what, what, what are some metaphors we can use for twisting? I love using the sponge, like wringing yourself out, releasing tension. You're like, especially if people are stressed, twists are the best way to go. Cause it physically is doing that to our body. It's like, goodbye, stress, goodbye, anxiety, goodbye, tension. And you can teach that as, as you're facilitating these kinds of practices and you'll feel it for yourself. All right, seated cat cow. So once again, find your, find your seat. And when oftentimes in yoga, when we think about cat cow, we're in tabletop position with our wrists um, under our shoulders, our knees under our hips on the ground. You can absolutely do it that way if you want like that. But for today's purposes, you can literally just put your hands down on the chair, on your lap, doesn't really matter. What I want you to do is inhale, open through your chest, look up, exhale, round through the spine, gaze down and curl. Inhale, gaze up, chest open. Cow pose, exhale, round through the spine, drop your head. Inhale, open through your heart, look up. Exhale and curl. And do a few more of those on your own breath, one breath per movement. One more round. And then whenever you're ready, you can find a neutral spine. Check in with yourself for a moment. Notice how you're feeling in your body. Excellent. Love it. Yeah, tell me, how do you feel? More relaxed, more comfortable. Uh, no stress. Yeah. Mm, amazing. Yeah. I feel relaxed. Warm. Ooh, awesome. Zen, oxygenated, easy peasy. Love it. And I loved now, it. I just was amazing. And I'm I'm very grateful for you. Oh, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I mean the beauty of these practices is that they're simple, right? They don't take much like uh, overwhelming amount of thought. And so if we just allow our bodies to move in these natural ways, it can be very, very, very healing. Oh, your neck feels so much better. So glad, Sarah. Amazing. So I want you to uh, take on your um, inner, inner child, uh, being right now. So this is how I would do it with kids, right? The young ones. So um, if you don't mind, I would love for you, if you don't have a bunch of noise in the background to come off mute, because it's way more fun this way. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? So 
We're going to do some awesome cat cows. Are you ready to become cats and cows? Who's yeah. ready? Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. So I want you to sit up nice and tall. And on the inhale, open your chest. Say moo. Exhale, drop your head, curl your back. Meow. 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 Inhale, look up to the sky, open your heart. Moo. Exhale, round your back, drop your head. Meow. Meow. Let's do one more. Inhale, look up. Oh. Exhale, round oh, for your big oh. And now bring <laughs> your paws to your heart. And just take a moment to check in, see how you're feeling. And then let's hear it. How do you feel after our cat cows? That was oh, hilarious. Playful. Playful. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, really yeah. amazing. They're so fun, right? Yeah. And I, I like doing it with the adults too and the middle schoolers and the high schoolers because sometimes we just need to play and laugh and we take our lives too seriously, right? So you, I'm not saying that's only for the little ones, but the little ones obviously embrace that and love that. And we'll move, they'll moo and they will meow even if you don't invite them to. So they may would. as well... Uh, live into it. And if you are teaching or parenting um, young children, they actually, this is true for anyone, but they are really going to follow in your lead. So if you're bringing in the energy and being super playful and fun or inspiring, like they are going to be into this. If you're like, come join me for some mindful movement, they're not going to be into it. Right. So you, the invitation is that you are also embodying this and living into it and having fun with it. And they're going to just go off of your energy. I promise. I've seen it happen thousands of times. Um, and so just have the confidence that, you know what, if I'm doing it and I'm into it, they will come around. And of course you might face resistance, of course, right? In any context, there might be you know, I had my Oscar in my pre-K class who had tantrum, tantrum, tantrum every time I started doing any mindful movement um, for like months. And then I was like, come on, Oscar, come on, come do this. And finally, when I just said, you know what, Oscar, you can do whatever you want during this space, just as long as you're supporting everyone else and doing the mindful movement. Yeah. He came on in and then He's, I said, you know, Oscar, would you like to teach this? And he's like, you know, mm? and he became the mindful movement teacher. And then there you have it. The ones that are the most resistant are the ones leading these practices. So never give up on your students. Also offer these practices as an opportunity for your students to cultivate leadership skills. And, and once you teach it once, they're simple, right? You can invite different people to, to lead these and it becomes a community building experience as well. So uh, on that note, let's do some wrist stretches. So I think I added this one in because of what we're all experiencing in our life right now. I don't know about you, but I've never spent more time on Zoom and in a computer and like doing this with my, with my wrist, which is oftentimes not necessarily healthy. So I think in any given day, it's super healthy to do a couple rounds of wrist stretchings. And this again, can be super simple. It's mindful movement, right? So bring your wrists up and let's just make some circles. It's like, oh man, I didn't even realize I needed to do that until I started doing it, <laughs> right? And now go in the opposite direction. Ah. Oh. oh yeah, there we go. And then if you want to, you can bring your arms out straight. So I will push myself back like that. 
and then do it like this. It can get even more of a stretch. This is my, you might feel like, whoo, I'm feeling it in my upper arms. Oh yeah, yeah, I see Deb reached her arms up like this. You could do that to give you some, some support and then go in the opposite direction. Amazing. Just notice how that feels. Great, and now try this one. Bring your hand towards the, the computer and just gently, 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 gently pull your fingers towards you. You don't wanna do it too hard because that could overstretch your wrist. This is really healthy though. Okay, and now switch sides. <laughs> Amazing. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Amazing. So good. So how does that feel for you? Come on off mute. Amazing. Mm. Really good. Great. I needed that. Great. Right? Awesome. Yeah. Good. It's so amazing. Like I didn't even, yeah. you know. How in the world is it even possible that we didn't know that that was something we should be doing every single second of our lives, right? So, you know, you can use this with any age student, like, hey, we've been in the computer for already 30 minutes now. Let's take a, just a moment of pause and do some wrist stretches so that we're ensuring our bodies are healthy. You can introduce it like that. You could do it at the end of a lesson that you have with them when they've been on the computer all day. Um, but you talking about um, the, uh, you like talking about how good this yes. feels, the benefits of it, the research behind it is so, so helpful to get the buy-in, right? They just need to experience it once or twice in their bodies to feel the benefit. Then they're gonna be like, oh, okay. Um, but. If you're, if you're talking about how meaningful these practices have been for you or how you learn them and wow, it's really helping you, they're going to want to be a part of that. So, all right, next up, we've got dun, 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 half sun salutations. So sun salutations are typically done um, standing up in the traditional sense, but during, given that this is a trauma-informed approach and we wanna make sure this is like relevant and accessible to everybody, I'm gonna show you how to do it in a chair or um, if you're seated on the floor, you can also do it there. And if you want, you can stand up. So any of those options work for you, but let's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach it from my chair. So I want you to ground down through both feet and if your feet are planted on the ground, that's great. If they don't reach the ground, that's also okay. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Look up, palms touch. Exhale, fold over your legs. So forward fold, beautiful. Inhale, palms to your shins, halfway lift and lengthen through your spine. Exhale, fold all the way over your legs. Inhale, arms reach all the way back up towards the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Amazing. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, palms to your shins, and then lengthen through the crown of your head. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up, rise up, look up. Exhale, hands to your heart. And now just take a few breaths here. And check in with yourself. Notice how you're feeling in your body. And then whenever you're ready, you can come in 
back to the space and chat in how you're feeling right now. And then when I say trauma informed, um, one of the key things about ensuring that this is trauma informed is that these practices are supportive and healing for those who have experienced trauma, right? So a lot of us, a lot of our students, especially now, are in a consistent state of chronic stress, heightened trauma, um, and these practices can help release that if they're taught in, an, in a very accessible way. And so I see in the chat from, from your feedback, these practices felt soothing and grounding and peaceful and good. And one of the reasons that I'm going, that I think that this is happening is not just because of the practices themselves, but I'm gonna get meta here. It's because of the way I'm teaching the practices. So I'm not saying you have to do this with me. This is mandatory. You must do this. I'm not taking that um, approach of mandatory or required. That turns into like a behavior management strategy. And that's where we get into a lot of trouble. Everything I'm saying is invitational. I invite you to. With students who have experienced trauma or anyone who has experienced trauma, usually what happens is the choice has been pulled away from them. In a moment of trauma or over time, um, facing trauma over and over again, these the people who were in that experience didn't have choice in the matter, right? They had their agency pulled away from them. And so from when we talk about teaching mindful movement from a trauma-informed perspective, we're making sure that we're offering options so people feel like, okay, I invite you to, I'll make this explicit. I've said a few times, I invite you to soften your gaze or close your eyes. In that moment, you just got agency and power. I gave you the right to choose. I didn't say, everyone, close your eyes, because that could trigger people who have experienced trauma. It might bring them back to a moment in their life that they don't want to be connected to, or that might take them out of a healthy state um, and more into the panic zone. And so you want to make sure that your language, as is shared in the chat, is, is so um, thoughtful and that everything that you're doing is invitational, it's permissions-based, and you are using a, like a heart-centered loving approach. So if you notice, and I'm sure we've all had it, we have those students who um, may not be that into something and you like, we, what I wanna move away from is the deficit thinking, oh, they're not gonna like this and this and that. No, we actually need to take an assets-based approach and offer this as a gift to everybody. If people don't wanna be involved in it or don't wanna participate, that's for perfectly fine. Let them be how they want to be. And I promise that a lot of the times when you think they're not participating, they actually are. They're soaking it in, they're getting curious, they're wondering, and then all of a sudden they'll show up and you'll be blown away. And so I really um, encourage you to think about, am I using the language? Like, I invite you to do this with me, or, um, you know, I'm, this is this or this you can lift your arms to the sky if it feels comfortable for you like other language i'm using um find this in your body so again we're not telling them one way to do it we're offering them we're also encouraging them through our language that they have what they need in their bodies to be able to know what's good for them right? What's healthy, what's comfortable, what's empowering, what's going to help their well-being. And, um, and those very simple language shifts make all the difference between a trauma-informed approach and a non-trauma-informed approach. So if you're newer to, to this work, when thinking about it through a trauma-informed lens, am I making it, uh, am I using inclusive language? Like, am I Am I forcing my students to do something? Am I, or am I asking, giving them permission to try something with me? Um, give me a thumbs up or, or feedback in the chat if that's helpful. Awesome, awesome. So 
Uh, oh, cool. I see some of you in the chat have been using the language I've been sharing. I invite you to most important takeaway from the Breathe for Change training. Love it. Um, is there any time we invite in their stuck places? So I like, I don't like to intentionally invite people into negative space. My whole thing, and we do this, go deep into this in our meditation curriculum and, and all across Breathe for Change, is we want to observe what's present and invite people to accept wherever they are. And some people are going to be in a negative space. Some people are going to be sad. Some people are going to be happy. Some people are going to be frustrated. Some people are going to be feel like all the time, all of our emotions change. We know that. How can we build a relationship with ourselves and our bodies and our minds and our hearts where we are fully accepting ourselves, no matter how we feel or where we're at? It's another trauma informed approach. That's the, the, how are you feeling is a trauma informed approach because we're not saying, do you feel good? I didn't ever tell you how to feel. I invited you to consider how you feel. And then, all right, beautiful, breathe into that, amazing. Um, and so there's a, there's a very, very nuanced distinction um, that again, we never wanna tell them what to do or how to feel. We wanna invite them to, uh, try these practices out and get curious about how that, how they feel as a result. And they're going to see it. Oh, I felt frustrated before. And now I feel calm. Wow. This works, right? They'll come to that conclusion by you giving them that space. I love that. I never use the word negative emotions. And I think I just did in the explanation. No, every emotion is welcome. Sadness, frustration, anger, this is all a human experience, right? And especially right now when there's grief in the air, there's anger, there's sadness, frustration more than ever because of the context that we're living in. Um, it's so important for people to feel like what they are experiencing is okay. And um, from that place, they'll heal, they'll, you know, shift and accept themselves. And then in our Breathe for Change meditation curriculum, in our training, in our 200-hour training, we, there's like three stages um, of meditation. We talk about um, observing our reality is the first step. When we observe what's here, observe our breath, our body, our emotions, our thought from there, accepting our reality. Okay, I see that I'm sad. I accept you, sadness. I accept you, anger. I accept you, joy. And then from that place of acceptance, we can then create. So the third step is creating our reality. Um, then it's like, okay, my intention is to be more, more, you know, I want to be compassionate. I want to be happy. I want to be this. But unless you've observed where you are and accepted that, you can't, it's, you're skipping steps, right? And then we're trying to be someone we're not, we're, we're, we're not feeling we're worthy, we're, we're living into some negative self-talk that likely is not going to serve us. So I hope that this, these, some of these practices were super helpful for you and that um, you feel like you have some tools to walk away with. And I'll recap what we did together, just so you remember. So we started with the seated side bends, this one, right? Yeah, simple. And again, the little ones adding rainbows, bananas, you get creative. Um, it's amazing. Then the seated side twists. So just twisting to the right and to the left. And, you know, depending on age, they might not know right and left. So you can just say one side or the other. It's another trauma informed approach um, using inclusive language. Um, the wrist stretches, right? These, the the stretching out. Um, oh, we forgot the cat cows. How could I forget the cat cows? The moos and the meows. <laughs> and then the half sun salutations where you reach your arms up, fold forward, halfway lift, fold forward, reach back up, hands to your heart. 
and that that's just one um, sequence. You can make up your own, right? You could be like, reach your arms up, move to the side, come back up, go to the other side. I'm just teaching you certain things to know that this is your uh, playing field to start from, right? Eventually, and you know, people who graduate our 200 hour training get like deep training and all this stuff. So you'll be an expert if you do our training and all the things. Um, and be able to teach a 60 minute yoga class, no problem. Um, but for the sake of those of you who are coming new to this training or new to um, mindful movement, it's a great, great way for um, you to just start and know that you you have everything inside you to be able to just make up your own, right? Just make it up, see, or have introduced a few of the things I taught, have your students who wants to try teaching us a mindful movement. You can come up with your own. And again, that's another way to be trauma-informed, provide agency, know that there's not a right or wrong way. There's no right or wrong way ever with any of this stuff. There's no advanced posture. I hate that language because what that means is that there some people are not at the stage that they need to be, whereas others are based on what our bodies are telling us. And so how do we make it so that we're providing different variations and options that allow everyone to feel like they've found their posture or they've found their, their movement. Um, so I, um, I see, are you getting a printable summer, a printable summary of the session? So we'll send the recording, um, afterwards. So you can always see the recording again with some resources. Um, and for those of you who want to know more about the 200 hour training. So this was like a tiny, 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 tiny. Um, so this was like less than an hour and then times that by 200 and then you've got our 200 hour training. No, just kidding. Um, but our 200 hour training um, through that, you get two certifications are uh, the internationally recognized yoga teacher certification through Yoga Alliance, which is like the umbrella um, organ certifying body of yoga teachers around the world. We're the only yoga teacher training in the whole world that is specifically for educators and then community leaders who want to take this um, education SEL trauma informed lens. And so it's a beautiful experience because you don't only learn to teach trauma informed yoga classes for both adults and young people. You also end up getting your social emotional learning facilitator certification. So you learn to weave in unbelievable SEL practices, like those eight components I talked about, you go deep dive and know how to use, how to um, embody and teach all of those. You all, you'll also learn how to um, facilitate and, and lead professional development and wellness workshops for your entire community. And so if any of you, at all are interested. Um, we have a upcoming training. Our next one is um, starting in mid April, it's April 17th. It's once a month are the live sessions on Zoom followed by little modules to complete in our teachable course online in between. So it's once a month um, from April through November. And so it's eight weekends and six hours a day, Saturday and Sunday on those weekends. So like nine in the morning till three Pacific time, 12 to six Eastern, you do the math, everything in between 11 to five central and, um, and 10 to four uh, mountain. But the, the way the process works, if you're interested is I just sent a link in the chat there is, that goes directly to our 200 hour page. You can pull it up on, if you want on your, on your devices now. And there's a short form that asks for your, your name and why you're excited about this training. And then you'll schedule a call with our team. So we talk to every single person before about who you are, why you're interested in doing it, how we can support you financially. Um, and you know, we have a bunch of different options for how to ensure that everyone who wants to take it can, um, and, and from a financial standpoint. So, um, all you need to do is fill out that form and schedule your call. And I recommend that you do that now, whether if you're interested in the April cohort, or we do have two intensive models over the summer, it's over six weeks and they're 
two days a week of the live sessions. Um, and then you get your certification after the six week program. It's just more, it's just like the eight, eight month thing squeezed into six weeks. So if you're someone who's like, I want to get it done, I'm ready to go all, all in one Monday and Tuesday is one training Thursday and Friday is the other. So depending on which one works best for you, end of June till either the very, very end of July or first week of August. It depends on which cohort you choose. Um, if you're interested in any of those three um, options, please fill out this form now. Our trainings fill up incredibly quickly and we want to make sure that you um, have the ability to at least let us know who you are and why you're interested so that we can support you. The other thing to note is that um, we also have a um, $1,000 discount for educators right now because of the incredible work that you're doing. So if you submit your um, application, um, then like, you know, today or in the next few days, but ideally sooner rather than later, then you'll definitely have access to getting that $1,000 discount, which will definitely um, is something that we feel so great about giving our educators and leaders who you're changing the world every single day for our students. And we just want to be able to make sure that you're taken care of and that you have the tools to do the same for for your people. So um, I would love to open up space for any questions. And then for those of you who are grads or in the training, if you want to say anything, I would love that too. Um, Jen. I, so I put this in the chat as well, but um, I did the summer intensive a few years ago. So it was in person and it radically changed my life. Oh, um, I, I love what I love about the program is it is about yourself as well as your students and putting yourself and your needs first. Um, I came out of, um, a mental breakdown into this program, um, because of teaching and because of how stressful it was. And, um, this, you know, was better than the outpatient program, <laughs> to be honest, um, I teach at a continuation high school. And so bringing these elements into such a specific population was really nerve wracking. You don't know how they're gonna react. And, and so the last three years, it starts out very much, they're resistant. They're like, what is this? They're like, miss, you're real cute, but I'm not doing that. <laughs> and so um, it always starts out that way. But after about a month, they start to get into the groove of it. And, um, within two to three months, they're asking for it. Miss, can we do mindfulness today? I'm really stressed. I don't, I'm feeling really down. Can we do something? And I have seen a marked difference in their behavior. Um, it has improved incredibly in their focus and their participation. Aww. So this so is a amazing. program that works, you guys. Like it is worth the investment in yourself and your students. So do not hesitate, honestly. It's amazing. Oh, thanks. Uh, your story is so inspiring. So thank you for sharing. And I'm, I can't wait to just hear more and more about your journey. So yay.